more you supported the show, I'd be less sick of podcasts. Here we go. The blubbity block. Sending out good vibes. Shivers or vibrations and stuff like that. Underneath breaths of deep gratitude and prayers for guidance and protection. And put on a didgeridoo and shamanic drumming track. Shivers or vibrations and stuff like that. Underneath breaths of deep gratitude and prayers for guidance and protection. And put on a didgeridoo and shamanic drumming track. Shivers or vibrations and stuff like that. If more you supported the show, I'd be less sick of podcasts. <laughs> <laughs> Most people who have a near-death experience, mm. um, about 50% of them accept reincarnation as a fact. The other 50% do not. Okay, guys, welcome back to the Grimerica Show. We are going to be chatting with uh, the one and only PMH Atwater a little bit later about uh, NDEs and things like that. But first... As don't, always. don't forget the manual for developing humans. But don't That's ever we talk about. interrupt me <laughs> again, or the show is canceled. Now you know how I feel. <laughs> canceled. The one and only Graham C. Seti Sleepover Dunlop. How's it going, buddy? Excited? Uh, yeah. Yeah. It's either excited. gonna be C. Seti or Knuckle Deep. Knuckle Deep. Yeah. yeah. Two Knuckle Deep Dunlop. I'm gonna say sport. something about my finger. That's, my, uh, well, yeah, that's it. Yeah. Graham's, uh, for those of you who can't see, which is all of you, Graham's finger is in a little splint here. Want to tell us what happened there, big guy? I got slashed in hockey, and it just uh, looks like a tendon's been broken. So my finger's like permanently uh, broken, bent. Bent. So now you have to wear that thing for eight weeks? Well, she says it's too late to fix it. I, went, I waited too long to go to the doctor. Okay. I went to physio, and they, they messed around with it, but they didn't realize, I guess they didn't realize I should have it like bent backwards like this for eight weeks. It's probably because they're not doctors. Yeah. Yeah. Imagine that. Doctors know better than... We'll, we'll see. Anyways, uh, we'll see. Yeah. Yeah. Time will tell. So, yeah, we'll talk about We're that C-SETI thing. I'll do, a little, I'll do a little segment on that because I've got some UFO sightings to share from other groups around the world. We're both injured now then, I suppose. Are you, what do you got? Your little stomach problem? Yeah, it's just not going away. Is your muscle? It felt like it was getting better and then today it doesn't feel much better. Really? It's been a week now? been over a week a yeah, week and it was what it was would have been a week tuesday and the doctor thinks it's a pulled muscle yeah he's like three to eight weeks let's go to physio honestly physio sometimes knows what to do think so yeah most of the time it bugs i can feel it it's right in here and it's this muscle that runs up and down because now when i like i can like it's getting to the point now where that's like starting to be more localized hmm. well i hope you're okay buddy Hope it's not a hernia. I hope you well, that's my in. next thing. Is like, how long do I wait before it's not that anymore? Sometimes I think I have just the worst doctor, <laughs> but I like him because he's super cash. You know, yeah, he's fine with the vaccine thing. He admits that he doesn't know fuck all. And, wow, and you know, he never rushes you into antibiotics or anything. You know what I mean? He's just like he's an old school Somalian. I is the way I picture it. Yeah. Then sometimes I wonder if he isn't just a little too gosh. Yeah. He's like, well, I did check to make sure it wasn't my gallbladder. I guess. Mine seems pretty, pretty intense. She's new. I'm new to her or whatever, but she's pretty like always looking for little things. Right. So my kidney, my kidney function is low. Ooh. It's supposed to be at 50 and 38. So she's already recommending me to a specialist. and she wants ultrasound on my kidney and she keeps thinking I'm taking ibuprofen or something, but I think did my creatine. You were an alcoholic for what? a long time. Did I? So I think so. That probably does quite a bit yeah, of I think so, yeah. damage to your kidneys. Oh, no, no. I was, I'm fine for that. It's been almost 10 years. Yeah, I don't. Do they just do it better? Well, we apparently can't. not, but. <laughs> exactly. That's a so, tough one. Actually, I got shit because I've had a wreck form in my fucking truck for like two months. Go get my x-rays and shit on my <laughs> shoulder. 
But it was just like, once I found out it wasn't my heart, I just was, you know, that was my concern. Then I found out it was a structural problem, which probably means there's no. Why do you even, do, what, what's wrong with your shoulder again? I you think just, it's my rotator cuff. Go to, just go to prolotherapy. Is that where they it's covered. stem you cells? You have $500 covered on your insurance. No, no, no. It's not stem cells. It's just sugar water. It's a naturopathic remedy, but they inject sugar water in your joints and stuff. He's really good. Really? Yeah. Nobody drops dead because there was air in the knee. My shoulder's better. Really? Almost better. Huh. And that's chronic. Like, my knee's 100%. Yeah, my shoulder's in rough shape. It's been, I dislocated it a bunch of times, like, 10 years ago, 12 yeah, years that's, ago. That's what happened And it mine. didn't bug me until, like, I've always noticed that if I slept on my left side, I'd wake up with pain in there, and it's right in here. Right by your heart? Yeah. So I, I thought I had heart problems. That little tiny heart of yours. Yeah. <laughs> and then I went and got all the heart stuff done, and then heart's fine. So that's when he said. And that, then when he mentioned it, you can start to feel when it gets bad. I can actually feel it's like those muscles pulling away from my rib cage and then I'll feel it all the way down around in here. Whoa. Really? Yeah. Like if I go like that with my shoulder, it's just, and it's bad. It's just like, yeah. yeah and the so I'm sure I'm just going to go and then they're going to say that I need to get shoulder surgery, which I'll have to wait like two no, years. No, no, no. Try the pro- prolo. It'll help. It'll, it regenerates the healing in your, hmm. in your joint. Actually, a prolo would have helped my finger probably. Well, maybe I'll try that. If if we're covered on it, I might as well. Yeah. Because, I mean, I'll wait a year for surgery, I'm sure. Yeah, I mean, surgery's the last, uh, that's the worst case, right? Last ditch thing. What else did it? It seems like it's the first ditch thing. No, that should be last. Shoulders. What? I think Plummer went to the doctor just like, I need surgery. I know, but that's the last thing you should be doing, right? I think. Inject things, plus the... Directly into our blood system. Well, you got to go through physio. I'm surprised they'll send. They'll just send you to physio first. In some provinces, you have to do three things of physio, or they won't even recommend you for surgery. Like you have to do that before they even fully recommend you to surgery. Really? Like, that's what it's like in Saskatchewan. Yeah, but I think if I go to the doctor, then my physio is covered, isn't it? Yeah. If I don't go to the doctor, then it's not covered. But well, it's covered anyways under. Our, I need physio. It's covered anyways under our insurance. Oh, is it? Yeah. Unless I go get the X-ray. Uh, yeah, actually your doctor, if your doctor recommended you a physio, it probably would be covered, That's I fair. think, but our insurance covers it without the doctor's note. Just a limit or unlimited? 500 again. So I get, I, I've almost, <laughs> I feel like, honestly, I feel like a hypochondriac. I've used up like 500 in massage, 500 in physio, 500 in, no, I haven't done that yet. I should go for the fucking quad this year and then I'm 500 in prolo. What about chiropractor? I've never done that. Yeah, never done that, that or acupuncture. You got Bo Rogan hates fucking chiropractor. I know. I think he's, yeah, I think I he's think, wrong there. I think he could be a little misinformed. Yeah, yeah. But I've never died. He's got too many hardcore skeptical friends that just, I don't know. Anyways, I did want to mention that, um, we don't have to mention it now, but we do ramble on like this before the show, just for all the new listeners out there. Big shout out to everybody. And you can fast forward to the interview, but we usually go through a little bit of lazy ramblings and we read some listener stories and some emails and trip reports and stuff like that. Talk about a few things and then we get into the interview a little later. Usually. Usually. You can just skip ahead. There'll be a timestamp in the show notes or you can skip ahead. Fast forward button. That's right. Usually this goes on for 30 to 45 minutes, depending on how long the interview is. Sometimes an hour. (laughs) Sometimes it doesn't stop. Just don't stop. So what do you got for me, buddy? Well, I don't know. I mean, do you want to get into this, uh, the C-SETI stuff? Or what do you, what do you or I've got sure. a couple of synchronicities, some listener Maybe feedback. Let's start like, with some synchros. Oh, no, yeah, it made Seems me. like it's been a while. I'm a rambling gram with synchronicities all over the web. And Darren is skeptical about everyone And don't believe it yet Someone sent in the original of that song to me the other day. Oh, I didn't know that. Travel, that was one. Traveling Man. Oh, yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. Huh. So, um, 
You're gonna have to excuse my. Uh, I don't have the three finger technique on the laptop with this thing. So we have those three fingers. Why no, that kid doesn't work. No, no, the, the pinky's too short. Too short's a big problem for you. So this is a uh, shout out to Sam and Desiree. They were at the uh, Red Pill Expo, and they uh, they sent in a, uh, an email here, and they said, "Wow, Graham, the synchronicities in the June thirtieth Richard Lighthouse show were outstanding." I'm going to try and listen. I'm going to try and list them all. Here goes. You mentioned Samuel and I, Desiree. That was because uh, that was after the Red Pill Expo when I mentioned them. You read my sister, Brittany, synchro on the same show. We didn't even know she was sending in synchros. Samuel and I have just come across this blinking universe via intuition exploration. And we've also met others in the Houston area where Richard is currently and that understand it. And the Seth material is something we started reading, listening to prior to the show. We have synchronicities between the Seth material, radionics, and your show. Just too much to cram into an email. All of these things tie into a deeper, deeper project we've been personally working on for years. And it seems as though the convergence of all this information is literally now. Thank you for all the amazing and validating shows and flow of information. You and Darren are true beacons of light in a world that can easily seem dark. Desiree. Sometimes we get called the dark. Really? Yeah. Only when we talk politics. Really? No. Only on YouTube. Oh, yeah. YouTube's just the troll haven. No worries there. Troll haven? Actually, we haven't done a YouTube uh, YouTube segment for we a while with one. comments and stuff. Yeah, we you... could do one today. Okay, I got done. another quick synchro here. So. That's tough to rate. Yeah, that's a tough one to rate. It's like a compound, compound synchronicity. Kind of like your compound fracture. Actually, you know, isn't a compound when it sticks out of the skin? Yeah, is that this, how it is, works? this is just a, That's a just ligament a, damage. It's, just a, it's like a flaccid it's finger. It's ligament it's damage. It's flaccid. So, hey, Darren and Graham, just started listening to your show two weeks ago after listening, after finishing a live stream of No Agenda, which had one of your episodes playing right after. Oh, the fuck. The No Agenda guys are just the best. No, they're great. What a community. Oh, actually, I should probably just put a link in the show notes to that as well. Oh yeah, like them putting us on the live stream has been pretty big, pretty yeah. pretty good for us. Yeah. Absolutely. So the first synchro came that it was the what? The first synchro came that it was the bizarre LA episode. Ah. Remember that one? Yep. So I immediately downloaded it since I was driving down to LA from San Francisco Bay Area and wanted to listen to the show in its entirety. Recently I was listening to your fourth year anniversary show and I think you one of your guests mentioned the Higher Side Chats, a podcast that I really enjoy. That was, that's yes not, that was yesterday. That's not the synchro, is it? No, no, no. Okay. No, that was yesterday, June 10th, 17. But today, I listened to the recent THC episode, and Greg mentioned you, Graham, and your suggestion to go to the conference in Arizona. Immediately, I thought, holy fuck, that's too much of a coincidence. And today, 6-11-2017, one of your producers in the donation segment on NA mentioned the Grimerica podcast, which was a full circle of synchronicities. Funny which that day? It, June 11th. Oh, yeah, I remember that one. Funny that it all happened in a week of being introduced to you guys. Love what you guys do so far. Catching up on the back catalog should be fun. Cheers. That's Sonia from California. I think the whole back catalog is in iTunes. Yeah, or yeah. is in uh, Spotify too. Really? Yeah. Well, because I think I checked, and every episode's been played in Spotify now. Oh, that's good. Yeah, yeah. So we've been getting a lot of people contacting us from Spotify as well. If you're on Spotify, you're not. Yeah, uh, it's not going to work when I send. If you're a supporter and you're on Spotify, it's not going to work when I send you the link. Wow, I've already run into that. Okay, well, we'll talk about that later on in the show when we talk about it, yeah. the, when the support segment there. Where so thanks, that? Sonia. Glad you found us. And thanks to the No Agenda community. We'll give that a seven. Right on. 0.42. Why did I have to start adding the 0.42 again? 42 is the answer to everything. I think you were 42 when I met you. And all fucking downhill from there. No, I was 41 when I met you. Was it? Yeah. You must have been 42 when I cared. I was 42 when we started this. Ah, has it been five years? Well, I mean, we, 
December yeah, I guess he 12th. Was. That's what it was. Zero four. That's why the point four two is there. It must be. no. It's because forty two is the answer to the universe. Yeah. and everything. Yeah. Okay. You just love pointing out my age. I didn't point out your age. We, yeah, you did. I alluded to your age. It's like a little riddle you that people me. have to solve. You're close to fifty now. Actually, I told everyone you were 50. I know. Thanks. <laughs> hey, what do you want? The UFO quote or a sighting and stuff? And for the Let's do the UFO the... quote and you can roll it into your C-SETI <laughs> sleepover. Okay. Anagram going deep. It's a profound UFO quote of a week. Words to ponder and critique. The profound UFO quote of the week. That's actually one of my favorite jingles too, and I remember somebody giving giving that one some hard time. Yeah, you. The study of UFOs is a necessity for the sake of world security in the event we have to prepare for the worst in the space age. Irrespective of whether we become Columbus or the Indians. That's from Air Commodore J. Salutin. National Aerospace Council of Indonesia and Indonesian Parliament member. Hmm. I got a quick, another quick one if you want. A twofer? Yeah. Sure. Why not? That it could be an aircraft constructed on this earth, I do not believe possible. That's from Commander Juan Barrera, in command of Aquir Serta Air Base. I don't know where that's from. Probably Chile or one of the cents. Sounds like Central Central America. Mm. Sounds like a party. So anyways, we had uh, Costa on from ET Let's Talk, and we got a lot of good feedback from that episode. But um, I was thinking of uh, reading, we got emails from every once in a while, and there was some sightings from the field. Let's see here. And we're going away this weekend, a bunch of us, for uh, overnight. Overnight contact experience. <laughs> Sleepover. Sleepover. I'm going to be freaked out in my small little tent. I bet. <laughs> I'll be huddling there. I don't think it'll be scary. At least I'll have some friends around. It's scary being on your own in the woods, but. Are you guys going in the woods? I think, well, we're in the middle of nowhere, I think. Yeah. You think? Well, I don't know yet. You're we're just we're a secret. It's a location is secret, so we don't have any interference from the. Secret space program or anybody that's shilling out there. Are you being serious right now? What do you mean? You guys are having a secret location? I don't know where we're going. Monitor? Nobody knows? I'm on, uh, the only communication is on signal right now, which, I mean, obviously that's hijacked anyways, but just one extra level of security that they would have to get through to find out where we are and hoax us or something. Or fucking Graham just never comes back <laughs> after the weekend because he's locked in some cellar. Seller? What do you mean? Well, I don't know. I don't know where you're locked up. Maybe it's an old abandoned mine. Oh, yeah. So this is from uh, Costa's ET contact at Mount Shasta, his retreat. So he says, wow, what a week of sky and ground contact, or ET contact, we had at Mount Shasta. That's in Northern California. Our Mount Shasta retreat group linked up with the global CE5 initiative teams that we knew were going to gather on June 24th. So at Mount Shasta, 17 of us experienced six nights of flash bulb streakers and slow walkers with flashes. Every night was populated with them. Yeah, <laughs> Sorry about that. Real piece of work. Um. <laughs> <laughs> the final three nights were epic. More volume and more dramatic, longer lasting sightings. Several of us could feel the presence of many ET beings within and just outside our circle under the stars. To top it all off at midnight, our final night as we were going, we were ending the retreat, a group member spotted a stationary light hovering on a ridge, maybe two kilometers from us. Everyone stopped what they were doing. The object was close to the ground and not that far off. It was light. The light was floating, dimming, powering up, and turning off, and then back on. One group member saw it as an oval shape with definition. Another group member flashed a flashlight at it, and it responded with a flash of its own directly at us several times. We all discussed the various conventional explanations that might account for this, but in the end, we agreed it was likely an ET craft. We implored it to come closer, but it did not. 
Later, we speculated after analyzing the attitudes of our group members that one of them had enough fear of a closer approach that it served to diminish the chance of such a closer approach. After a half hour or so, we gave up but departed with excitement. Our group had never been exper- had never before experienced a close approach. We had been focusing and meditating on that, welcoming it all week. Tell us your ET contact experience. Thank you. Breathe the fresh air of Earth. The free air of Earth, actually. That's what he put there. Are you reading the uh, newsletter email? Yeah. I think so. <laughs> me too. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean, me too? You mean you think I am? Yeah. Well, I, I said it was, it was in the feedback. Oh, did you? No. Yeah. I wasn't listening. <laughs> <laughs> What a shocker. I was prepping for the YouTube segment. Oh, I see. Okay. I was trying to figure out which one of us is a dick. Okay, so uh, <laughs> that's not too hard to figure. <laughs> Actually, I got feedback about your dick from the, the listener. Oh, my. Yeah. Why? What do you mean, why? About me being a dick? This is from the grumpy green guy. The fourth year anniversary has come and gone. I was listening to the four-year show for a specific trip report mentioned in 195. 21 minutes and five seconds. What a disappointment. I did not get to hear it. I re-listened to 200 just to make sure it was not in there, and it was not. But I heard a good show quote from that show around the 110 minute mark that referred to Darren. He got the white penis. (laughs) What? You don't remember that? No. You made a comment, said, I got the white penis. We were talking about race and color oh, and stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah, nice. <laughs> I don't remember that. So we we said that something played in a certain part of a show and it didn't? We must have said the wrong show. No, 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 no. Oh. No, I think, oh, yeah, actually, um, I might have said that. Well, all you'll have to do is just check every one. If you want to, I can continue on. He's got a little ghost story here, too. But we're starting to get followers in Gab. No way. I don't know how that's even possible. So can I continue on here? I want to finish off his email here. And then we can talk, if you want, um, about the trip report. So anyways, I have a little ghost story to tell you guys about. It happened. trip report? No, I'll tell you about the... uh, Oh, no, we won't talk about that, will we? We might. The the trip report episode? Just. Okay. Anyways, I have a little ghost story to tell you guys about. It happened a few years back. I lived with my grandmother, who was in her 90s. I got to work. I got off work around 4 a.m. and took a shower when I was done. And I could not open the door to the bathroom because it was locked. It was an old style lock that uses a skeleton key. I had to yell to wake my grandmother up and asked her through the door if she had the key to unlock the door. She told me she has not had a key to that door since the 1950s. <laughs> I eventually got out a bending. I got out by bending a coat hanger she handed me underneath the door and picking the lock. I know how this lock set works, and know it was the actual lock mechanism that was locked, not the part connected to the doorknob that was stuck. My grand my grandfather died in the room right beside the bathroom, so I think it might have been him. Also, in the latest show, number 228, it was funny that Darren was making fun for you, of you, by saying chats, not chat, but now there's multiple chats. (laughs) No, there's not multiple chats. Keep up up the good work. I hope you guys could interview the missing 411 David Pallades and the health ranger from Natural News, Mike Adams. I've been trying to get the health ranger and David Pallades, so you should just tell them that they should come on the show. And I was thinking when I was talking about camping that we, it's a good thing we haven't had David Pleiades on. Oh, that's too bad. Because <laughs> that would have been a little freakier, I think. Yeah, no, there is only one chat. is the Discord chat. Everything yeah. else, all, all signs point to the Discord chat. So we have a perpetual chat room? And it's the Discord. Everything else is canceled. Right. I think Grimstick and Failed still patrol the Hangout. And yeah. if people show up there, they send them to the Discord. But the link is gramerica.ca slash chats. That's C H A T S. That's right. Okay. All right. You could have done a C H A T Z or something. I don't something. know how to spell. No, that's a millennial thing. Okay. So there you have it. There I have it. That's it. That's it. So thanks for the email, 
Grumpy Which green guy. Which episode did he say I had a white penis? Uh, two hundred. Is that a bonus show? What did he give you the timestamp? One around the one ten mark. So don't don't try find yeah. it now. But I don't remember ever saying that. You don't? I, I don't do. remember, I remember sending people to the wrong episode either. You'll just have to go through every episode. No, no, I don't. I don't at think that uh, time stamp, and you'll find it. It's like an Easter egg hunt. Speaking of Easter eggs, check out uh, Lost Bread comic on the website. I've, I've been meaning to talk about that. Uh, check out the website, and Nap's been doing the web comics on a weekly basis again. So there's a whack of them up there. And they're still filled with Easter eggs. And I don't think they're just Grimerica Easter eggs anymore either. He's starting to pick on some listeners as well. Some of the more prolific listeners. And then if you guys head over to, I, I can't remember the website. It's either Grimsteak or Gromsteak or something. But him and James Cruz have started up a podcast. Oh, are they actually doing a podcast podcast? Or are they just doing, I thought they were just no, doing they, it. In they, the... Yeah, then they're releasing it. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. So I think they got a few hundred downloads. Yeah, they're doing great. We'll link it in the show notes and check it out. That's awesome. Yeah, good for them. I'll... Great things that come out of the chat. Oh, yeah. It's really fun Jets. in there. These guys are pretty funny. They are. Graham doesn't come around much. I, I don't have time, a lot of time to do it. I, I get stuck, and then I re, I try and read through it and all that, but it's hard for me to stick around there it. for a then while. He's just going to get upset. What? I just get upset why? if you start going back and reading through. Oh, why? You guys are dissing me all the time? No, they don't let me. There's too many Team Grammers. I can't. Can't get away with it. Team Grambo. Team Grambo. So, what else was there? Well, we got to talk about the, the social media segment, but why don't you, we can get into that after, uh, after you read the Tokyo email. Oh, yeah, we'll right, okay. That whole spiel. Yeah. Then we'll get well, I don't know if it's Tokyo, but. Or Japan, yeah, sorry. Yeah. Okay, so here's, uh, here's an email from Trippin' Osaka. Trippin' Osaka? Osaka. So it's probably Osaka, not Tokyo. So, hey, Graham, having difficulty donating from Japan. I tried donating 40 bucks, and it popped up with a message saying that PayPal wasn't supported in Japan. Any ideas for me? I'll send a screenshot of the message I got. I only started, recently started listening, but I love your show and have demanded everyone I know listen to it. I especially love the Randall Carlson stuff, hybridization, 232, and out of Asia, 223 episode. Also, all the stuff with Connor Habib and the mindfulness one. I'm a South African, but I grew up in America and have spent the last 12 years traveling around the world. Currently, I do modeling, cycling tours in Osaka, and I teach part-time, have a guest house, and work at my friend's bar a couple nights a week. Unfortunately, I will never write a book, so I'll never be qualified to speak on your show, but I've dedicated my life to the pursuit of happiness, and I think I've got some revolutionary ideas that could really help you and your listeners. In English, well, first of all, I'll say that you don't have to write a book to come on the show. Actually, we'll probably try to get this guy on the show. Might as well. That's right. We like to do weird things like that. <laughs> Odd things, you know. But yeah, you don't have to have, write a book. I mean, we've had we've had listeners. Uh, we've had listeners on the show before, and you know, yeah, it's, we like the participation. Word up. Anyways, he says, in English, we translate Buddha's teachings to say that he renounced his world's desires, worldly desires, but in Asian languages, it translates differently. He gives up his bono in Japanese. There's not a good direct translation, but it roughly translates to emotional or psychological baggage. Sounds like the death of the ego or something like that. Meditation might allow you to recognize your bono, but ridding yourself of them requires a direct attack. All living things are driven by two forces, to survive and breed. Anything that inhibits our ability to do either is bono. Irrational fears, embarrassment, shame, desire, jealousy, anger. If you're scared of cockroaches, pick them up till you aren't. If you're embarrassed of your nudity, <laughs> your nudity get naked until you aren't. Desire, give up your prized possessions. Sing on the streets, try to tell the absolute truth to everyone, etc., etc., etc. Anyway, I think there's a, a certain type of person who gets a PhD and writes a book. I don't think I'm that type of person. Yet I'd love to help if I can. Totally not expecting anything, no. Only very glad to have people like you doing what you're doing. Thanks, Ricard. Ricardo? Ricard. I'm going to throw the O on. Thanks, buddy. What a great email. Yeah, so currently there's not really a better way other than sending in a check, I suppose. 
or email us. Yeah. Just email us. Yeah. If, uh, we'll handle it on a case by case yeah. basis. I'm going to look at Patreon. I don't know what Japan has against PayPal. Seems kind of fucked up. You just email me your credit card number and I'll put it into the PayPal. No, I'm, I'm just kidding. kidding. <laughs> Would that work though? I don't know. Maybe we should try it out. Anyways, if, you, if, if PayPal doesn't work, send us an email. And we'll figure it out. I'm going to try and get a Patreon going because it's been around long enough that it seems like it's going to stand on its own two legs. It doesn't seem like it's going anywhere. Right, so right. maybe I'll go ahead and just get that going as another option. Yeah. But currently, those are the only two options. Well, what about Bitcoin? I mean, Bitcoin. Oh, there's is always right Bitcoin. Here. Yeah. The address is on the website. Right. It's, I can't just say the address. It's fucking retarded. Okay. But it's in the show notes, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it's in the show notes. Oh, I think it is. Actually, uh, I'm not sure if Bitcoin is, but it's on the site. It's on the site, Mr. So, yeah, if you, if, you, if you go into the show notes and you see slash support, That'll take you to the support page of the site, which has all the different ways to support, which would include the Bitcoin address, right? That's right. So you might as well just check out grammarica.ca slash support, guys. Sign up for a monthly if you can. Uh, without you guys, the show would not be going. So, you know, the people that do support the show are the people that produce this show and you let all you guys listen to it. So there's a bunch of options there. There's a buck a month, two bucks a month, all the way up to 30 bucks a month. You can... Email me if you want a custom number. You can do a one-time donation. Any uh, one of those things is great. Of course, the monthlies do help out the best. Um, and, of course, we have started rewarding uh, the supporters with uh, some bonus episodes a couple times a month. i just say thank you to the people that have been supporting the show for years and keep it going and try to get a few people on board. Yeah, we're calling it our Black Budget Support Feed. Yeah, so I think there's seven or eight episodes in there right now. Uh, next month, we're going to throw in a round table and maybe a trip report episode. Yeah, we might do a trip report where Darren is going to talk about his long awaited and me. I don't really have any profound ones, but I've got little ones. And uh, yeah, maybe some listeners that have been saving up. I think we'll do the road trip in this summer too at some point. And then they're like, Battle enter the mushroom back. sequel. Yeah. I mean, part of the problem is that there's just too many people in the listening to this stream right now. To start getting into some of the stuff we used to do. Yeah, it kind of lets us have a feed where we can get into some more controversial stuff as well. And the people that and listen to it, that know stuff. us, that, have, yeah. that, are pay, that are helping us uh, by supporting the show, get to listen to all that. And we don't have to some worry about... Some stuff's pretty personal to you. Like, tripping on mushrooms is pretty personal for... Because you had the, that mushroom episode out for a while, people. right? Until it started yeah, it to reach... Yeah, hit a certain number. And you're like, yeah. Like once it's been downloaded three or four thousand times, it's like, you. And I mean, now it's way more than that. So yeah, you know, I don't need my mushroom trip going out to ten thousand people. people. And I don't think we'll ever have tens of thousands of supporters. So, so that's in there. That. Actually, that mushroom app is in there in this black budget feed, right? The first one is. Yeah. And we actually did a show on black budgets, and we did a show on cyber stuff, and uh, there's a couple there's a other bunch ones in there. And, and we're gonna do two a month starting in August. So. If that's enough to coax you, then there you go. Of course, yep. you don't have to do money. You can oh. help the show up by sending in all sorts of, you know, feedback helps, ratings help, reviews help, sharing the show helps a lot, telling that's people the, about the show. Yeah, I mentioned this too, is uh, it doesn't matter. Like the donation amount doesn't even matter. Like you could give us, I mean, obviously we trust everybody that they'll give us value for value, right? Whatever they think the show is worth. Yeah, you don't have to be on a set monthly and you don't even have to be on a monthly. If you do a one-time, if I get a donation, I immediately send the link out to whoever the email came from. Okay, so, and the monthly, it's any monthly as well or any, any one-time any donation? Any monthly or any one-time Now, donation. Now, what if, is, are you sending these things out regularly? Like Right now I'm sending them out as the payments come in. So, so daily, so it's almost like daily, daily then? Daily I send out a few. But it's like we started on like whatever day, right? Say if we started on the 15th doing it, I'm, I'm just picking an arbitrary number. Then the people on the 14th aren't going to get it till August 14th. So there might be people that haven't got it yet. And if you want it sooner, just email me. Because it's too much for me to try and go through and figure out, especially now that I've started doing it this way. It's so these are the mess. new, so this, you're talking about the new donations that come in, you get, you send out yeah, because right the monthly away, people but the come regular monthly yeah. ones that haven't, this haven't come up yet, They're right? Cycling yeah. through them. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So we're but cycling through them. if you're on a monthly them. and you don't want to wait till whenever, just email me and I'll okay. send it right away. It's just and then, too complicated to try and sort it all out. 
And then your cell doesn't make it easy. And then you're sending a link out for people to actually have access to a separate podcast feed, right? So these yeah, aren't so on you YouTube or anything play. like that. You can't copy and paste the feed into your browser. It'll just it's turn into a bunch of gobbledygook. But you could do it into most pod players. All the pod iTunes players. native podcast player and a lot of the other pod All players, pod you copy players. the URL, you put it yeah. in there, and it, it'll an give you the feed. feed. So you have to go to add a podcast by URL, copy and paste it in there, and away you go. Right. It's the only way. Okay. And Spotify. Spotify people are going to have to find a podcatcher, whether it's on their computer or their phone. Can people find these on the computer? Can they do that on the computer? Yeah, there's podcast players for all everything. For all electronic devices or all, whatever. Yeah, you can find yeah. a podcast player and play Desktop, it Desktop, laptop, in tablet, okay. phone, okay. iPad, iPod. They've all got fucking okay, cool. pod catchers for them. And a lot of the Spotify people that have come now and got it for that feed are now switching to that. That's how they consume. Right. Because Spotify are streaming. Oh, I have a hard time. I have a hard time consuming audio in any way except for like on-demand podcast form and audiobooks. Like I Once have a hard go, time with YouTube Once and a hard a time with streaming. You, like, you have a hard time going back to Spotify. Yeah, I think I don't know. I never use Spotify, so. But a big of shout out to all the Spotify listeners. Yeah, it's a, that's probably was pretty quick growing. Absolutely. Yeah. And Spotify was great because I think there's only so many podcasts on there still. The other thing we want people to know is that nothing is changing with Grand America. Still, we're still do the audit bonus episode in here as well. So at least once a week we do this. Yeah, throw in the other odd one. Um, the back catalog same. will always be free. Yeah, and there's still no commercials. Yeah, still. everybody wins. Yeah. Um. So yeah, there's that. I was just going to say something else, but you made me. Oh yeah, the app will be coming out. Her, it's pretty quick. We got an app going with Libsyn. They were had a little option we could provide there for a couple bucks a year. Libsyn is our hosting service. Yeah, Liberated Syndication. Yeah. That's where we host all our podcasts and allows us to chew up all the bandwidth it takes and all that. They they offer apps now as well. They're like 250 bucks a year, so we're just going to jump on board and get one of those. So that that's another way you'll be able to consume the show is just by downloading that. I wonder if you know, we'll have to figure something out there. But yeah. anyway, the app's there. I don't think it'll have the extra content in it, but might be able to figure something out. Right on. Okay, the other thing we should mention is the skydiving. Ooh, it's a good thing you reminded me. Guess what, too? My, guess what I got for my birthday? My girlfriend gave me a My girlfriend's taking me skydiving. She wants me to do skydiving. Oh, really? Yeah. Nice. Well, I'm hoping fucking eventually we can go get our course and shit. Yeah, that would be fun. So, yeah, a friend of the show, James Nation, is, uh, well, he doesn't put it on, I don't think. I believe it's his skydiving place that puts it on. But, uh, oh shit, where'd it go? Yeah, his skydiving, the place where he skydives, puts on this, uh, this special every year where they take teddy bears and they jump out of planes with them and go skydiving and take pictures of them all. And, uh, it's 20 bucks a teddy bear and then they take all the teddy bears to the children's hospital and, uh, give them out to all the kids with pictures of their teddy bears skydiving. So they do this every year. It goes all summer. I think last year there was a, a pretty pretty bad turnout. I think they only did like 620 bucks. Uh, so this year we decided that we're going to try and help them out a little bit and see if we can't uh, get that number way, way up. You don't have to be in Calgary. Um, it's just a GoFundMe page. So it's uh, the, the web address is gofundme.com slash bravebears slash donate. Uh, we'll put a link to that in the show notes. Y'all know James, jumping out of planes all the time. So, uh, of course, I got Graham and I each a bear. And uh, if any of you guys want to do that, then you're more than welcome to do so. I'll tell you what, if you if you buy a bear and send me a screenshot, I'll give you the black budget support fee. That's a good idea. What was it? What was it? GoFundMe.com slash Brave Bears Flying? Slash donate. So, hey, to, uh, Japan guy, buy two bears. That That could be the donation. GoFundMe.com slash Brave Bears slash donate. Slash donate? Yeah. That's a good cause. That's right. So screenshots of you buying bears will get you the black budget support feed. And a picture of Graham's calves. No. Yeah, okay. Bingo, bingo, social media jingle. Don't forget to rate, comment, and or subscribe to the Grime America Newsletter. 
Okay, from Graham Cole. I love Dr. Carmen Bolter, but she is so enthusiastic about her knowledge, and her knowledge is vast. I sincerely hope that she changes people's views about the pyramids. It is the most exact info we have to date. People are so asleep that they either take it on their own level or they try to mock it. D- due to un that should be D U E. He spelled well. He spelled do wrong, so I'm reading it wrong. Due to unconscious, lazy-minded individuals, not keen on the ideas that they are not living to their own full potential. Who likes to realize that they are machines living in a Groundhog Day type life? This interview viewer is a total dick, by the way. Wow. I asked, well, I asked which one, but he, but he never responded. Is this, this is feedback from a YouTuber? Yeah. Maybe we should have a troll jingle. Maybe we need a troll jingle, like uh, Billy Go Gruff, like, Yoni. Me, personally, I fucking love hate speech and vindictive <laughs> linguistics and weaponized satire and insulting the fuck out of those who are easily triggered for whatever the fucking reason. I especially love it when they fucking hate it, I do. Oh my god. So, was that the, was that, that other was, feedback? That, that was in, in response to the ref. Beautiful move, ref. Thanks for that suspension, but fuck. <laughs> <laughs> so, here we go from Yulian so Darren, wait, No, so, we're not stopping. Great stuff. The obvious question is how to make hybrids at home. Anybody have any useful information on that? Okay, go ahead. Was the dick joke? Was the dick comment about the uh, that episode? Yeah, that's probably why. Because you were you were being a dick about my the, the suspension, probably. No, it was about the Carmen Bolter episode. Oh, was it? Yeah. Oh wow. Mm. Uh, what else do we got here? At the end, they question how an agency could just create a scene to oppose the war. I think it's deeper than that, and the entire 60s is a blueprint for what was written decades or centuries ago. We know that there is knowledge the elites know and that we aren't privy to yet, not to mention technology. And if the evil one is orchestrating it, he, it already, he already has a picture of what needs to be done to get there. Wow. That was on the Dave McGowan episode. That's weird, because it sounds like feedback from an episode we haven't even released yet. I listened to y'all on Spotify and on here. Y'all fucking rock. Graham, you sound like Joe Rogan. Oh my God. Someone else said you sounded like something else. I haven't <laughs> looked it up yet. Though. That's a good one. <laughs> Someone else said you sound like something else. Uh, I give this episode two thumbs up just for the space ball reference. I have a fever and the only cure is more space balls references. I don't even remember that. I mean, Either. That might have been something I just doubted. No, it probably about the jam. The jam, maybe? No? Ludicrous speed? Sorry, no, I didn't see you playing with your toys, sir. Uh, slight grammar. Oh, that was when I put the wrong title. Love the show, and this topic is cool, too. I agree this cast is kind of hard to listen to, but I think the guest may just not be the best at putting a very long story into a short interview. Super interesting topic, though. I will be looking to the story more now. What was that? That was on... Uh, Jim Chestnut? No. Fox Saga? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, that's enough for now. Right on. Thanks, buddy. Yeah, there you go. Got anything else? No, I don't think so. Time to jump into it. Yeah. All right, guys. Enjoy the chat with... uh, The Manual for Developing Humans. It's very interesting. Mm. There you go. Enjoy. So tonight we've got the 
one of the original researchers in the field of near-death studies, PMH Atwater, with us. She's got a fascinating new book out, The Manual for Developing Humans. I just finished it. It was pretty, very, very interesting. Um, she's been she's been looking into this for a decade. She's written like 15 books on the topic for the most part. And uh, yeah, it's really interesting. We're looking forward to getting into your book. Uh, welcome to the show, PMH. How's it going? I'm fine. You, you're saying it's a pretty good book? Oh, it's amazing. I mean, weren't you impressed? <laughs> I was. I was. I'll tell you what, I was really impressed at all the different topics that you cover in it. Like, it really is interesting to see the take on everything from, like, spiritual development and, and politics and economy, and you get into all kinds of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. It, all the basics for being a full, complete human being. Yeah. And, and, I mean, a lot of it wasn't a surprise to me because it was, uh, a lot of it's pretty... Uh, you know, I would say it's logical, it's it's spiritual, it's when you get into development and stuff like that. But there was there was some interesting takes, uh, even as far as talking about the history of the Earth and uh, and catastrophism. And you touch on a lot of the topics that we've talked about with our guests in the past, which which that that was kind of surprising to me that you would you know touch on stuff like that as well, climate change and where where we came from as humans. You know, the purpose of the book. It, it is to help us be fully human because if we look at all of these topics singly or if we, if we just strive instead to the, be the best spiritual person we can be, that's all backward thinking. If you are fully human, if you are fully all that you were born to be, that includes the spiritual, plus it includes everything else. And one of the things I, you know, literally, um, you know, in olden times, the word hue, H-U, um, meant God. That was the tone and sound of God. Hue man was understood to mean God man. So if we are fully ourselves, we're literally a God in the making. And one of the things I've found, maybe you have too, when you get it uh, off, uh, when you start studying all these different topics, if you start talking about them, if you start reading about them, nobody gives you how to live them. Nobody ha- uh, shows you how to bring that into your life in a practical way that really works. So that's what the manual is for. It's not to titillate you. It's it's not to you know to to to, to um, open up all these new topics for you because obviously for you they're not new. What the manual is for is to help you bring them into your life in a way that's usable. So that's what the manual's for. Huh. Well, it was also very interesting as far as topics goes as well but there is a lot of there is a lot of like to do's like you can do this and you can do that to to you know to get healthier to be more conscious to all kinds of things like that yeah and you develop yeah intuition the paper bag trick (laughs) yeah yeah it, it, it it's all in there to help us put it all together not just play you know mental tricks but to put it in our life in a livable, doable way. But, you know, um, that wasn't my idea. (laughs) And the way it's written was not my idea. You know, I don't know if you noticed if um, when you read through it, it has a fifth dimensional format. And I don't know how many books you've read that have ever had a fifth dimensional format. In the fifth dimension, all is revealed intention rules. So everything is, every topic is approached from conscious, subconscious, superconscious, or intellect, intuition, and knowing. So you get the full thing, it, you know, the circle as you go through. So it's not a matter of logic. It's a matter of what works on all levels. You know, if if we're going to be fully human, we need to operate on all levels. 
And so that's, uh, you know, and it, it, like I said, that wasn't my idea. <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't have known how to do it. That all came from the vo- voice like none other that spoke to me during my third near-death experience. And then all the thought form drawings, uh, everything. Yeah, yeah, maybe, it's maybe we should. Different. <laughs> yeah, maybe we should. Yeah, we should roll that back. Yeah, that. let's put some back context. In the 70s. Yeah. So yeah, let's put some context to that. So it came from your third one. So you've had this information for quite a while, and you've you decided to come out with it. You know, just recently. Um, no. Do you want to do you want to <laughs> talk to your? Do you want to talk about what happened back then, just to give some people uh, some background? Yeah, on I you? haven't. I haven't been sitting on it. <laughs> Not at all. Um, Let me, um, okay, let's talk about how it all came to be. Because if we're going to do, if we're we're going to talk about that, then we're talking about death. We're talking, we're talking about what it, what it went through, what I went through after I came back Mm -hmm. from, from dying. Uh, my first death was um, January the 2nd, 1977. That, that was a miscarriage. I was raped by my, uh, uh, an extreme hemorrhaging. The second one was two days later, January 4, 1977. And that was a major thrombosis in the right thigh vein, followed by the worst case of phlebitis the specialist had ever heard of, <clears throat> excuse me, let alone seen. Um, and then the third one, um, I had three in three months <laughs> and the third one was March, um, 29. And we don't know to this day what killed me. Uh, doctors think, well, you know, it might've been a heart attack. We can't, can't, can't be sure. Nobody knows for sure. Um, I, you know, Graham, most people, Graham and, and, and Nathan, most people seem to forget that, that near-death experiences, at least the majority of them, come from violence or trauma. So you've got a body to rebuild afterward, al- along with dealing w- with this, whatever it was that happened. Um, and for me, I had to relearn how to crawl, how to stand, uh, how to walk, how to run, how to climb stairs, how to tell the difference between left and right to see properly, hear properly, and rebuild all my belief systems. So I was challenged um, to relearn life. Just, (laughs) I mean, what is this stuff? I mean, I I literally did not know who my children were. I did not know what food was, the fact that we eat food. Um... I didn't, I, I didn't understand sheets, soap, pots and pans. I had to relearn it all. Um, everything that I had done before, I had to, I had to relearn from scratch. Um, and then later that fall, I had three major relapses, one of which was uh, adrenal failure, total adrenal failure. I was working at the time with a, a blood, uh, blood pressure reading of 60 over 60, which means I wasn't doing too, too well. Um, and it, it took about a year for me to be reasonably human again after all of that. And uh, that's when the pressure from this voice became quite great. Mm. And it, it was that voice that told me to be a researcher. <laughs> I was on my way at the time to being a, a bank manager. <laughs> I was taking classes and bank management. <laughs> well, you know, I've got to be, <laughs> you guys are really experienced. I'm going to be very real with you. For for a decade before this ever happened, um, I had been deeply involved in metaphysics, psychic phenomena, transformations of consciousness, researching that to the tune of thousands of people. I started Idaho's first nonprofit metaphysical corporation. Um, I, I guesstimate about 3,000 people that I either worked with, put on, uh, put on conferences for, 
talked with, who were part of the research I was doing, because I wanted, I was a ghostbuster. <laughs> I mean, I did all the psychotronics. I, I would, you know, did all the stuff and was showing other people. So my goal at the time was to get away from all of this sensational stuff and show people what's real and then how to do it. So I brought in um, speakers. Um, and like I said, nearly 3,000 people. Um, and, you know, I taught meditation, taught you know, all of this stuff. Um, for some reason in this lifetime, <laughs> I tend to be the particular kind of person. Oh, it's not enough that I do it. It's not enough that you do it. It, it. For me, I need to see it from thousands of people, hundreds of people. Um, I need to look at things from 360 degrees. I need to tear it apart, put it back together again. Is it real or isn't it real? It's not enough that I see it or do it or you know any of that kind of stuff. Uh, I'm always testing, testing, testing. So this was um, all from before your your NDEs. Well, I'm I'm giving you the before. Yeah, I, I'm giving you background. Yeah. Um. So the voice and, and help and and just simply helping you to realize that um, I had been in this field for a long time, but I had reached a point in my own spiritual life and. Um, that um, I wasn't satisfied with my life. Mm -hmm. I wasn't satisfied with the way things are going. And um, that wonderful, wonderful phrase that says, when the student is ready, the teacher will come. And I really felt I was at that point in my life where I needed a new teacher. <laughs> I got death instead. <laughs> You know, I was expecting a person. <laughs> so, so the the voice you had you heard in the in the fall uh, was it the same? So, did you hear that voice as well during your third NDE? And then I, you, I didn't you... hear any voices in the fall. That voice I heard March twenty nine, my third near death experience. Right. That the, 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 that third time I died is when I heard that voice for the first time. I call it the voice like none other because I did, I don't, yeah, I don't know what else to compare it to. Mm -hmm. Um, my sense was it was of God and that voice told me to do the research. Um, quote, this is what it said, quote, test revelation. You are to do the research. One book for each death. It showed me what that was. It did not show me how to do it. Um, the books, book number one was not named. So I have no idea what book number one was. My, my suspicion is that that was my first major book, Coming Back to Life, which is now available on Amazon. Um, but I don't know for sure. The second book was Future Memory. Future Memory is out there. It's a companion to the manual. Future Memory is the what's and why's of the universe and of creation. Every sentence, every paragraph, every page of that book is part of the math I used to create the labyrinth format. It is not a book. It is a labyrinth. You read through it like you would walk through a site labyrinth. The purpose of the book is to raise your consciousness up to the next highest level possible for you. The book is literally a brain changer. It is a psychotronic device, it's not a book. It's a lab labyrinth. It's a brain changer. So, um, and and the and that voice came back for the writing of that book because I didn't know how to put it together. I had tried seven times <laughs> to write that book and couldn't do it. And so the voice came 
and showed me how to do it and um, was with me until it was finished. Then it disappeared. And um, the manual, a manual for developing humans, the third book, was actually the first book I ever wrote. It was it, it was number one, and um, I wrote it according to how I was directed to write it, and and and, and then I did what I always do or almost always do with my material. I sent it out for peer review, and I sent it out for peer review, and everybody <laughs> everybody who read that book said. Ah, the world is not ready yet for this book. Put it in a box. <laughs> so I did. I put it in a box. And and there it lay for 39 years. Wow. It didn't touch that box at all. Uh, the thought form drawings, everything. They were all done. Um, then, um, gee, when was it? Well, it was... I think in 2014, very, very good friend of mine, um, Robert Vandy Castle. Maybe you know him. He was one of the world's um, leading authorities on dreams. His book, Our Dreaming Mind, is one of the best books on dreams ever written. Um, Bob Bob died. Um, It was in March, I think, of that year. I can't remember for sure, but, you know, early that year. And I, and I went to his um, memorial. I was there early. No one else was there, so I was sitting out in my car. And Bob manifested in the seat next to me. And he looked at me and started laughing. And he said, I knew you'd come. And then he left. And so I waited a little bit, and then I went inside. And I was seated on the right-hand side, third row, middle. <laughs> and I'm looking at the dais, and they have this big photo of, of Bob um, I think one of the best pictures of him that was ever taken, actually. And so I, I'm I'm just sitting there, <laughs> um, and and all of a sudden Bob, Bob comes out of his photo, and he he looks at me right in the eye, and he says, "It is time." That's all he said. Now Bob knew about the book in the box, hmm. and I knew. That's what he was referring to. Wow. So after his service was over, I scooted home as fast as I could, and I opened up that box. And bear in mind, that's the first time in 39 years I opened up that box. (laughs) It stunk to high heaven. You know, practically had to fumigate the place. (laughs) Uh, But when I can finally stand to, you know, ruffle through all the pages in the and that were stuck in the box, I, I, I thought to myself, you know, this isn't half bad. <laughs> so I made my commitment then to do it, to put it together. And, and the voice came back for, for, for doing that. And um, when it was done, the voice left. Wow. So, so that was the only that's sort of a brief history <laughs> of of this um, voyage of mine. Um, you know, I, 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 um, these books are kind of personal in the sense that they came from my near death experience, future memory, and a manual for developing humans. All the other books were research, and I and I was. Um, and I'm shown and told to do those, not by the voice, but but by, uh, you know, I, I never chose to write a single book. I mean, nobody believes that. <laughs> Fifteen on near death. And nobody believes that I never chose to write. Um, um, the, the air would fill up with sparkles. Beautiful, beautiful little sparkles. And they'd fall on my desk and they'd start to spell out things. And I and I'd get this name or topic that I was to write about, and you don't ever do anything you're told to do. Uh, uh-uh, uh, no, never. You always double check. Always. 
So I went into prayer and I would always ask you, you know, is this, is, is this appropriate? You know, is this, is this um, best for me to do for my highest good and the highest good of all concerned? You know, is this right? And if I got the high sign, then the re- researcher in me comes out and I become the technician and um, I, I do my work and I'm very thorough. I'm a cop's kid. I was raised in a police station. So when I say I'm thorough, I'm not kidding. And, uh, you know, all, all those books are out there. Um, so what was it like reading the content of, of that book? Like, did it seem, I mean, 39 years later, um, <laughs> you know, because cause well, like your, the... your book is very, it's also very modern, right? Was it hard to to update that with all the new technology and all the new geopolitical stuff. I mean, how did, how did you, how did you, uh, how did you f- put the yeah, two together? Yeah. You know, you're, you're, you're not going to believe me when I tell you, <laughs> but I'm going to tell you anyway. <laughs> um, it was already like that. First of all, <laughs> yeah. First of all, I got to tell you, um, um, about the voice night like none other. It, it, it's it's taken me a long time, decades, to figure out what that voice is. And I didn't finally put it all together until just last month. So this is recent. That voice is not a voice. It's not a voice. I don't channel. Um, I'm not, I'm not a medium. I'm, I, I'm not, a, I'm not interested in that. Um, what I call a voice. Hmm. Let me describe to you what it's like when that voice comes. I, you know, I'm, I'm sitting in my, in my, in my office. It's filled with air. Yeah. I mean, look around you right now. See all the air? <laughs> there's a there's lots of air in your room, right? That's pretty stale in here, actually. We're in like a bunker. <laughs> there's hardly any air left. But it's some kind of air. <laughs> <laughs> when that voice comes, what I call a voice, when that voice comes, the air falls over. Literally, you can see it. It falls over again and again and reveals what I call the voice. And, and I can't really say that the voice comes in. I, I, I can't really say that that, that, that whatever it is uh, waves in in any way. What I can say is, um, that the, the room fills up with shimmer. Let me describe that for you. M- my second near-death experience was, um, the entirety of it was spent in the void. What I came to call the void. The void is kind of a, a dark place. Not a frightening place, but a, kind of a dark place. There, there's no sound. There's no color. There's no people. There, there's nothing in the void. Yet the void feels like everything that ever existed, everything that exists now, and everything that will ever exist is right there, right at that, right at that moment. The void is sort of like the ultimate womb of creation or the universe, whatever you want to call it. But, but there's, but there is one thing in the void. I said there was nothing there, but there is one thing in the void and that's the presence of a shimmer. And as near as I can tell you what shimmer is, imagine in your mind, um, a jello mold. You, you, you just, dumped the the jello onto a tray from a mold 
and and you're sticking out your finger to touch that jello. And just before you get to the jello, it's not moving. Your finger is it, it's just about to touch it. There's that presence and feeling of shimmer. It's that shimmer that fills the void. And it's that shimmer that I worked with to do future memory and to do the manual. Did you get, did you get, it gain, doesn't talk. Did you get, it doesn't the, talk. Did you get, what it doesn't. <laughs> okay, keep what going. What it does is, <laughs> yeah. um, what it does is it, it, it kind of nudges and shows and, um, uh, fee, I mean, you feel it, and, and I follow those feelings, those nudges, that sense. Um, there was a, uh, actually, the manual was the hardest book I've ever written because I didn't know how to put it all together. So I'd be sitting at my computer, <laughs> and, uh, uh, you know, you're looking at a blank screen, and I, I would yell out, okay. <laughs> Give me a word. <laughs> Give me a sentence. Help me get this started. Because, yeah, you know, I don't know even how to start it. So that's how it all came to be is that sense or that feeling of gathering all this material, updating all of this material, um of bringing together everything in the manner that it's written. Again, this is not a regular book or manual. Um, it, it, it's a fifth-dimensional format. You know, I, I didn't know how to do that, that, but there it is. So it's almost like your, you know, your youthful uh, metaphysical experiences was like training and then do you think something happened to you during that NDE that enabled you to see the shimmer or to sense the shimmer like could, could we all is the shimmer there for all of us but you gain special access to it well I think it's there for all of us um, they talk a lot about it in yoga and the Upanishads and you know all the Vedic teachings and um, meditation um the old yogis, they talk about the void. Uh, lots of people um, talk about the void or write about the void. I had never read any of that. I, I'm now aware of it, but I had never read any of that before I died. I mean, I didn't even know the word void. Um, that just came to me when I was actually in that space was I was in the void because that's the only name or phrase I could think of that applied to where I was. Hmm. So, um, um, so that's all I can offer you. Um, uh, some people do train for it. Some people accidentally slip into it when they get into a deep meditation. Um, I guess there are classes for it, although I don't know who teaches them or where. I just know in, in, well, you know, did my previous experience prepare me for this, for that? Well, I've got to say yes. But, you know, how do you delineate that? Um, Because my three experiences... Um, the first one was more of an out of body experience. So that's sort of like a lot of other people's, uh, my second one was in the void. That's very different from a lot of other people's. Uh, my third one was at that center point that I, that, that center point of creation where I could watch it all happen, I could see it happen, I could find out how creation actually works. 
Um, and I talk a lot about that in future memory, by the way. If, if you want to get into that deeper aspect of what a soul is and um, and, and um, the, the, the things I actually saw in my experience and what I, I was able to track when I started studying science and quantum physics and this kind of thing, I was able finally to put two and two together and get some kind of four. <laughs> mm-hmm. And that's all in future memory. Mm. But the man, manual is is the how. You know, I mean, we can talk till we're blue in the face about all of these theories and all these wonderful experiences people have, and, and they are incredible. Some of them are frightening, some of them are wonderful, but they're all incredible. Uh, but when push comes to shove, how do you live it? How do you bring it into your life in a practical way that enhances your life and helps you to be more fully human. I mean, um, the purpose of the manual is, is an invitation for you to think for yourself, to take control of your life, both its unfoldment and the responsibility that comes with that unfoldment, and align yourself with the directive of your soul. That's what the manual is. You know, it's not just a, a party of all these wonderful things. Uh, but it's, 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 um, it's a, how to do it. Yeah. You've got all kinds of stuff in there about the, you know, the physical world and the physical body and your spirit body and, uh, the energy body. I mean, it gets into all kinds of stuff. You can do exercises and all kinds of, uh, focus techniques and intentional yeah. expansion. I mean, everything it's, it's really, it really is, um, all encompassing, but I'm really, I'm yeah. really curious about how you, how you found this old, or not found it, but you opened up this old box and then had to add it all this, like, because it's very contemporary as well. So was that the process of the shimmer and the, and the um, you know, pray, and the, praying and, and listening for direction on how to combine it all together? Yeah. How to combine, how to update, how to put in, um, what to put in. Yeah. Yeah, it's all directed by that sense of sh- of shimmer. Yeah. How long did that take to rewrite? Um, it took about a year. I think it was about a year, a little over a year. Um, and then um, have the editor work on it. Mm-hmm. Um, I hired an editor to work on it, and that took some time. And then hunting for a publisher. <laughs> yeah, who's going to publish this? And um, that took some time. And then it finally gets to the, uh, the publisher and the printer, finally gets on the bookshelves. And that was April of this year. So we're talking the early part of, of 2014 until um, it was actually on the bookshelves. Yeah. So, um, three years that to me was, yeah. <laughs> so how, how was, did you, how did you connect your, all your research, like your decades of research of, of NDEs to, to the manual? Like did that influence, I, did that influence? You know, was it more? I really don't kind of sort of, but mostly not. Um, I'm going to say kindly, uh, kind of sort of in some ways because, Oh, um, because if you if you really really look at the near death phenomenon as I have, yeah, and really do it in depth with yeah. both children and adults, then you're you come face to face with the fact, and it is a fact that the near-death experience reveals more about life than it does death. And what it reveals is absolutely startling. You know, near-death experience is the most common phrase spoken by adult near-death experiences, experiencers afterward is always there is life. Now, if you really look at that, 
There's no such thing as a before life. There's no such thing as a now life. There's no such thing as an afterlife. It's all life. We have always uh, existed. We exist now. And we always will exist. That turns according to our needs. Um, if you re- Again, if you're really looking at the near-death experience, what it reveals is that we're all psychic, that we're all intuitive, that we're all innovative, that we all can take these out-of-body trips, that we all can bend time, that all of this that's in the manual is absolutely normal to each and every one of us. And that's what the near-death experience shows, if you're going to be really honest. It, 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 it gives you 360 degrees all at once. And, and, the- and that's what confuses so many experiencers. They're getting this 360 degrees all at once, and it they can't handle it. Do you think that's like a break in your consciousness filter or something that somehow stays active while you're alive? I don't. I. I. I uh, uh, I'm sort of tossing with the word break. Um, c- certainly, your consciousness expands and it expands hugely. Um, maybe that's not a word, but I just invented it. <laughs> Well, we started with bigly. Uh, Hugely should be okay. <laughs> um, for some people, it's not that great. Um, you know, uh, th- not everybody has the full intense phenomenon occur. Um, in my research base of 3,000 adults, See, what were the numbers? It's, I think it was like, I think it was like 21% claimed that their near-death experience did not make that much of a difference in their life. All of the rest of them um, claimed that it made such a difference um, that it was almost like discovering another world, a new world, um, a greater part of them, an expanded part of them. Some people even went so far as to say they became a different person or a newer person or a more expanded person because of it. So if you look at that vast majority, I mean really vast majority the near-death experience was a life-changing event. Not life-changing in the sense that they came back to life, but life-changing in the sense of what kind of life they came back to. Mm-hmm. And the fact that they discovered um, they discovered so many things, like, uh, like for instance, the after effects. You know, it's the after effects that validate the experience, not the other way around. A lot of people get mixed up on that. Um, the after effects are both physiological as well as psychological. And, and the physiological, few people talk about, I don't know why, because I think that's really big. Um, on the physiological, it changes brain structure and function, changes the nervous system, the digestive system, uh, um, and skin sensitivity, and you, you, uh, most of them take on a lot of sensitivities afterward. Uh, certainly, electrical sensitivity is one of them. Uh, clearly, about seventy percent or more uh, have electrical sensitivity afterward. For me, for instance, I can't wear watches. There's no way I can use a cell phone or iPads or any of that kind of stuff. <laughs> Either I blow them up or they blow me up. Do you have trouble <laughs> reading the screens on iPads and stuff? Oh, yeah. I, I mean, I try to stay away from them as much as possible. Um, That's what I get when I I'm can't... on mushrooms. I can't even tell what my phone yeah. says. Oh, fuck. Yeah. 
Well, you know, and there's probably, I, I, I'd say there's some crossover. <laughs> I, I, um, I fixed my computer so I can use it. And, and the way you do that or the way I did, um, I have a desktop. So between my keyboard and the monitor, you know, there's that space. I filled it up with um, amber. And it doesn't have to be um, gem grade. It, it, it can be hunks of amber, unpolished amber, got lots and lots of amber because amber absorbs the blue light and all that radiation from the computer and, and transmutes it so that you can handle your keyboard and your monitor without it hurting you and then have lapidolite around you, that, that's a lithium stone, have carnelian to balance, um, have plants um, nearby, and then um, please, please, please have a, have a window or some kind of outlet to the great outdoors or, you know, uh, nature, and then have cork, have your modems on cork, or um, as, as much as you can sitting on cork. And then um, that absorbs this stuff. Hmm. And then you, you can handle it without injury. Oh, it's wonderful. And then always, always, always get acquainted with your computer because it's your electronic uh, helper. So I went into that deep space within me. Um, the early stages of meditation or visualization, whatever you want to call it, I entered my computer um, and talked to it, um, got acquainted with my computer, let it know me, let it know my energy, my energy surges, uh, what I'm like. And then I promised I would never hurt it or bother it, that we could work together and it would be okay. And I blessed my computer, gave my computer a name, and I've never had any problems with my computer since. Hmm. Probably do that with your car too. I mean, my, my, I remember name? my nana used to do that. She had a name for a car, Maisie. I think it was. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and she yeah. used to talk to her car. car. Jeez, my nana was ahead of her time way back then. <laughs> well, I asked my car if it wanted a name. And it said, yes. So I said, well, what would you like to be called? And it said, Navajo. So my car is Navajo. Uh, allow um, that which is around you to have its own voice. Um, you're not the great emancipator, the great God. You're certainly you're God in the making, but... Uh, allow life around you and your house, whatever, um, allow it to have its own voice so that it can communicate with you. And that's what I do. That's what I did. And that's what I did with my computer. It's hard. And it's hard to do. It's hard for me to sit still and, and listen to, to something, you know, and then waiting for that. It really is. So, like, you, you mentioned that we can all become intuitive and psychic and have OBEs and we all have this ability. So would you, would it be fair to say that your manual will teach us how to become more like that then? If for, especially for well, us that haven't had those. All, certainly has all the basics for how to do it. Um, another th a thing that I would share with you that's not in the manual is to practice tree bathing. That's the name of it came out of J Japan. Uh, apparently, I just, I just heard about it. Apparently in Japan, p people go out in forests or where there's a lot of trees or where there's a tree and they will, they will sit and just fully relax and allow the trees to sort of bathe them with their energy mm -hmm. or open up to whatever the trees might share. And um, it uh, medically, it it just it's incredible how the healing. It's kind of like grounding, that right? That people it. are doing. Too. Oh yeah. So take up tree bra uh, tree bath uh, bathing, 
I try and do yeah. I try and do barefoot yoga on the grass. That's oh that's yeah, good. that too. And, and like, yeah, and, and running running in bare feet a little bit on the on the earth. I yeah, think, I think that a lot of people refer to that as forest bathing as well. <laughs> I spend a lot of time in bare feet. Yeah, in my yard. Yeah, yeah. I, I try and get my kids not to put their shoes on too. Much to my wife's. Well, career. you know, you know, it all helps. Um, you know, we're we're part of Mother Earth. Yeah, I find some of the best way to ground myself is to take my feet off um, outside. Feet off? Well, take my shoes off and t- take your feet off, put huh? my feet on the grass. <laughs> You're clever. <laughs> yeah, but you know it does help. You know, yeah. taking your shoes off, put your feet on the grass. Yeah, and sometimes yeah. just meditating Anything. in a particular area yeah. it can really, you know, make me feel. Like I've got some clarity. Uh, it can make me feel a lot lighter. Like uh, oh, things get yeah. pulled out of me that um, you know I've been struggling with. You know, on an energetic level. Uh, yeah, and I can go away f- and within a few, you know, days after that, I feel much better than I was previously. Well, you know, the manual is full of all kinds of tips. Like, how many of us know that the six weeks before your birthday? It's the weakest you will be that year. What about the day the after six your birthday? Weeks after your birthday are the strongest you will be that year. Oh. And so I'm six in my strongest. Months, I'm peaking right now. My birthday is yesterday. Peaking. Yeah, From your birthday peaking. is where you have your most challenges and, um, uh, um, you know, uh, maybe problems. So... Know this about the natural flow of your body on the earth plane six weeks before your birthday, six weeks after your birthday, um, six months from your birthday. This is always true every year, every year, every every year. Um, at least, at, at, at least true in in general. Also, know that uh, everything at eye level in any and every room in your home. So everything at eye, uh, at eye level in your home, the various rooms, is what you're praying for. Literally, it's what you're praying for. Because you, you see it the most? Because you're, you, you, you notice it? Absolutely. It's subliminal. Absolutely. It, it, it's, it's feeding you. It's literally what you're praying for. So take a good look at what you have at eye level. Is that what you really want in your life? Hmm. That's interesting. I'm sick of sitting across the table from Graham all of a sudden. (laughs) (laughs) Well, you know, that's what the manual is full of. Uh, It's these tips, these understandings, these explanations, these exercises, um, simple ones, um, to help you be fully who you are. You know, it's time. When Bob Vandy Castle said it was time, it's really time for all of us. Look at what's going on in the earth plane now with the various countries, with the various politics, with, with jobs, with drugs, with everything. Look at it all. You know, the main way to deal with this, the best way to deal with all of this, um, to help you be sane, is to know yourself and be yourself, to be all that you can be. Because if you are, you will know what to do or where to go or how to handle it. It's not the, the latest stock market tips. It's not, you know, um, the kind of things that we would normally think of every day in our lives. Rather, it's know yourself, love yourself. That's the greatest. Um, that's the greatest challenge of all. It is challenging. Mm-hmm. It's hard. It's hard to slow down and quiet, quieten things enough to actually get there to even start to focus on that. You know, it that, is, it's, that's what the that's what the manual is. So go back and reread it. Oh yeah, yeah. No, no, I will. I will. There's a lot I of good, get there's the a good, little, good little tips in there. Improving book. That's the yeah. 
What, what was that one called again? The memory the one? The memory one. Is that the oh, one that's memory. like choose future your own memory. adventure that I just jump all over the place and raise my consciousness? Oh, yeah. That's future memory. Yeah. I'm going to get that. That'll help you, too. I'm going to read That'll it help you, too. So what was it like completing this manual for you, then, since it's been a part of your life for so long? Did your well, did you life change <laughs> after? Or? You're not going to believe this, either. <laughs> um, when it was actually out then that incre- incredible blasting energy I was given when I died to do the work, to do the mission, it left it, in 10 minutes. Wow. I could see it leave. I could feel it leave. I could hear it leave. It left. It's gone. Do you miss it? Um, I don't know. It just took off. It left. It's gone. Um, I had a very strong, wonderful singing voice that that's gone. My voice has changed. So it's scrappier now than it used to be. (laughs) Uh, um, I'm softer. I'm friendlier now than I used to be. Um, I actually rest once in a while now. (laughs) I didn't used to. (laughs) I mean, I was just, uh, you know, I would work, um, for about 30 years. Of, of my work, I worked um, six and a half day work week, um, average about 12 hours a day. I mean, when I, when I say I did a lot, when I say um, I was thorough and rechecked and checked again my work, I'm not kidding. That's exactly what I did. Um, and... Um, you know, uh, that, that's all gone. And I, and, I, and I finally, and I came to realize for the first time in my life, literally for the first time since I died, I can now make a choice. <laughs> I can do what I want to do. <laughs> you know, and I'm, I'm going, wow, wow, I can really do what I want to do with my life. And, 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 and so the first thing I did... <laughs> Um, I promptly decided to write four more books. <laughs> no way. I think some people are crazy. No, are you really going to write four more books? <laughs> yeah. Yep, I'm already working on one of them. <laughs> What's it no called? Kidding. What's it about? Um, I, I'm, I'm working on... Ah. I, I'm examining near-death cases with people who were between womb and the age of five. And that, in other words, I'm going after the tiny ones because I notice things with them that is, is not true uh, of people of any other age. And I, and I want more data. I want to examine that more thoroughly because I think I know what's going on, but I'm not sure. And so I really want to take a look at that, and um, and then you know I, I want to write some other different kinds of books. Well, you got to. Admit- and I want to spend more time with my husband. You know, he's so cute. <laughs> I love my husband. I want to spend more time with him. That's good. I mean, you got yeah. you got to admit the NDE research is probably some of the most important stuff going on now. As far as the, I mean, we are in a bit of a a battle against materialism, really. There's still this paradigm that controls our society in a way, right? That, um, you know, everything's materialistic. and Well, you know, read my books, The Big Book of Near-Death Experiences. That, that's an, encyclo- an encyclopedia of, 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 of the world, um, not just in the United States, worldwide. Then Near-Death Experiences, the rest of the story... Um, that's of my research. Um, have you seen us win? win the, is it winning? Are you opening things up at all? I mean, is the, is the community changing? Like from, from my point of view, people are becoming more and more aware to this other reality and, and things seem to be opening up, but maybe that's, they are, uh, they are. Um, but I, but I want to go further. Mm-hmm. I want to do more mm-hmm. because wh- what I'm seeing is that p- 
people are expecting near-death experiences to be like what's shown on television and to be like what's in um, the best-selling books. And that's simply not true. Um, the, the, the kinds of, uh, of things they do on television, um, that's, that's only about 12 to maybe 20% of the cases are like that. Most cases do not happen in hospitals. Um, so you're, you're getting sort of a, um, sort of a one-sided view of what it's all about. Um, and, and then the idea of the tunnel, um, the tunnel, um, is a media creation. It was created by the media after, um, Raymond Moody, yeah. uh, um, to, to sensationalize Raymond Moody's first book. Um, and I'm not saying there aren't tunnels. Indeed, there are both children and adults have them, but not that many. There's only about maybe a fourth to a third of the cases ever ever have tunnels. Does that include light at, at the tunnel? Do you mean light and the tunnel or the, just tunnels? Um, just the tunnel. Just right. the tunnel. Lots of people have lights. Um, the, the number one element is um, the out-of-body experience. Most people, adults and ch- children, will have that. Um, the, the next one is, is that, uh, light, that incredible light. Um, the third one is, um, being met by a greeter of some kind. Mm -hmm. And then the fourth is the life review. Hmm. And those are the main ones most people will have. Um, Everything else is kind of extra or different or, you know, uh, maybe just true for that person or maybe just a few people. We ought to do a show on just the near-death experience, I don't know. Yeah, it was just, um, it's good. I'm glad you answered that. One of these up days we're going to crack Graham in the head with a hammer on the show. <laughs> just to see what we can come up with. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He's not coming back. <laughs> Graham. <laughs> yeah. Have you... Uh, <clears throat> have you have you done any work or research into these um, people who are having similar experiences with psychedelics or anything like that or meditation or do you think there's other ways to get there other than dying? Well, certainly meditation and mindfulness are are powerful ways, uh, especially mindfulness in quieting the mind opening up um, those portals, those doors within you to where you can begin um, uh, to uh, um, access more of your own mind, more of your own soul. Extremely important. Prayer, absolutely. Um, These type of things, I believe, are essential to a balanced life. You know, if you you want a balanced life, you want a healthy life, um, it's not just exercise and food. You've got to have the other stuff too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, in 2014, I actually had a, uh, a past life regression and um, things changed for me. You know, I, I, I'm not exactly sure if it was uh, an NDE of such, but... Um, it was probably as close as possible that I've experienced one. And, you know, I, I went back and went through an experience in my past that actually had some effects to what I've been dealing with in my most recent um, years. And, uh, yeah, I I guess from then forward, I I lost my fear of death um, through just that small experience. So, you know, even if I didn't go through a complete NDE, uh, I definitely had some um, beginnings yeah. for my journey, for my spiritual journey that are still with me, yeah. Well, it's interesting because I it's had certainly, a... Yeah, the near-death experience is not the only way to do it. Yeah. Absolutely. These are all threshold experiences. That's what they are. And I, I had... A threshold I... ex- experience is, is any type of intense 
transformation of consciousness. It can be a Kundalini breakthrough, baptism of the Holy Spirit. Uh, it can be a vision quest. Um, on and on and on. Uh, we can have these experiences in lots of different ways. What makes the difference is how did it change you? Well, sometimes it's hard to tell. It's a it's a it's a subtle. Like, like I had a, what I think now is it was a Kundalini awakening and, and in a vision quest, which when there was no drugs involved, it was all breathing and sound. But afterward, yeah. I mean, I had all my chakras spinning and it was a super crazy spiritual Those are experience, powerful. but I didn't that, really, that by the way is the second book I want to write. <laughs> oh, there you go. But it that, is, but I didn't see any change right away. But like now, when I look back, that was a pretty big shift yeah. in my life. I mean, that's when we started the podcast. I think after that, or close to it. I mean, things really started to accelerate for me. Yeah, I think you see some things happen, and it's almost like a rebirth. Whether it's um, certain types of uh, you know NDEs or uh, regressions or visions, and they kind of give you an, a second or third chance sometimes at uh, readjusting what you're doing in your life and where you're going forwards from. Yeah. There. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I, I truly feel that one way or another, however we do it, um, to be fully healthy, we need to be fully conscious. And there are lots of different ways of helping that to occur and to keep it going. Once you get it open, to keep opening. Um, and, and, and to open our consciousness in healthy ways. Um, and once we do that, once we get on the bandwagon, so to speak, and... and um, involve ourselves in in that type of change. It's just amazing how the happier your life gets, um, how life is easier to live, even if you have go through tragedies, even if you know you blow up your house or whatever, or lose your money and go bankrupt. Even so you find ways of dealing with that a lot quicker and better. Um, you, ha you find ways or learn ways of handling it that's quicker and better. Um, the, the, um, it, it, I truly feel it's essential. Mm -hmm. You know, if, if we're going to have a healthy life, we've got to have a full life. Yeah. Full life has pizza in it, so I suppose we should let you get to your pizza. <laughs> yeah, my husband just walked in the door, uh, and, good, the, and the pizza's sitting on the table. <laughs> good, good timing. Well, do you have one last question there, Nathan, for her? Or? Yeah, I I don't know if it's more really a question. It's more just a uh, something that I've heard before, and I guess it's really something that I've need, I'm needing to look into more. But I've heard, uh, and I've listened you know, through other podcasts and uh, articles that I've read that you spoke earlier about the, um, the the light tunnel and going through and seeing that. Uh, I've heard uh, people discussing how it might be something along the lines of a, a reincarnation trap, almost like um, people constantly coming back into this, you know, um, plane of existence uh, and not being able to move to somewhere else. Um, any thoughts on that? I would challenge that. Yeah. Uh, most people who have a near-death experience, mm. um, about 50% of them accept reincarnation as a fact. Right. The other 50% do not. Oh, wow. Um, there's really very few things in the experience, the phenomenon itself, that speak to that. Mm. Um, there are some things that do. I did run across some some case studies of myself uh, in my own work where uh, people actually had uh, re reincarnational, uh, reincarnational uh, kinds of things that occurred. 
um, this this one woman who was involved in a car crash and died and came back, in her experience, um, she was engaged at the time to marry this uh, a certain fellow. In her experience, she saw herself marrying him in a previous life. So once in a while you run into something like that, but it's very seldom. Um, so I would really challenge that kind of theory. Hmm. Yeah. Good advice. Yeah. yeah. Do you have anything you want to, uh, anything else you want to say or any place our listeners can track you down on Facebook or Twitter or oh, anything like that? Oh, get on my website. Oh my goodness. www.pmh at water.com. Alrighty. I'll put uh, it's a... just one word, you know, lowercase yeah. P-M-H and, and then at Okay. And water. <laughs> okay. We'll put that link in and the show notes. It, so is it like yeah, PMH and I, I at water? <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, PMH at water.com. That's my name. And I publish a free monthly newsletter. So anybody uh, who wants to, um, uh, um, you know, uh, subscribe to that certainly can. There's an archive of previous issues. You're going to want to read the last three issues. Um, July, June, and May, uh, because of some incredible things science has found uh, on on the time crystals, and then finding out that the brain can easily access and operate in eleven um, eleven dimensions. Nice. So you know the latest, the latest, and. I, I call it um, the newsletter for the curious. <laughs> so get on. Yeah, I'll, I'm on there right now. I'll uh, I'll uh, put the links to that in the show notes, and yeah, it'll that's great. Oh, yeah. by the way, if you are a near death experiencer or an experiencer of of some some kind of um, intense transformation of consciousness. When you're on my website, homepage, there's a section called NDE After Effects. We'll send Get Graham in there. that. NDE After Effects. Okay. And that, I call that the first aid um, for handling experiences and certainly a manual for developing humans is the major book. But that part on my website, it's sort of like first aid for experiencers. <laughs> All righty, good. All right, well, thank you very much for coming on the show. Well, thank you. It was a blast. And blessings to everybody. All righty, and have, enjoy your pizza. <laughs> I, I will. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Bye-bye. Take Bye-bye. care. Bye for now. Bye-bye. And that was our chat with the one and only PMH Outwater. I think you guys will like this book. You should try it, Nathan. Really, it, I, I, it's one of those like there's a bunch of little tips and tricks in there for like. I bet. Yeah. <laughs> I bet you just love it. I no, I do. There's some good It'd be stuff. Good. I'll, I'll do a follow up where I'll, I'll try some of these things. Like there's face massaging, and hitting your a, acupuncture point. I want to see and, a book like that put down into like you know back in the day they used to make those mini little back of the toilet books or like a couple. Yes, that maybe should a paragraph be paragraph a page. Yeah, little like. Self improvement tips. I know the problem is I only got a PDF, so I listened to it on like triple speed. I heard you listening to it today. I don't know how you can. You know, I'm what? sure there's tons of people that listen to us on like time and a half. You know what? It actually helps quite a bit. If you listen um, on time and a half, you don't have to support as much. It helps me focus on it actually. So I'll, I'll just give you a second. No, no, right. don't, don't, don't. Sensations to guide its decision making process. You can be conscious without thinking anything, but you cannot be conscious without feeling. This is just the opposite of what we have been told. Ooh, I don't know about that. <laughs> yeah, it's fucking fucked. Here, you're here, son. It was so grand. I, mean, I, can, I, I can read fast, but that's just too much. No, it, it helps me actually uh, take it in. Uh, okay. Uh, we gotta get to it. You all looking for badass Randall Carlson after hearing him on JRE? The podcast is great. Oh, okay, okay, Every okay. At least a few times, and although I don't agree with all the guests, it's gems like Carlson and you two's <laughs> rambling that more than make up for it. <laughs> of course, you get rambling too in there. So you have to get the rambling gram in there. Rambling. <laughs> you, you couldn't have picked a better spot. I know. I'm lucky like that. So, anyways, how, yeah. I don't know how you could do three quarters, three speed. It should be. Like a, you can't even stop at double speed. 
it's hey, I only had like four hours to listen to this thing. It was you know. Is is the book available in like eight? Ebook as well as like um I don't know, maybe, but it should be like the back of a toilet book like Darren was talking about or a coffee uh, table book. Right. No yeah. offense by the back of the toilet book. No, but I mean that's like you can flip through it's all compliment. these little chapters. That's right. You know, each page is like you know, chapters are like half page, right? Like turn mm. your inner dialogue around is like half a page, changing a habit. I, I mean, can read that in like a crunch. Yeah. Like right. with sex and sex and more sex is five pages, so that might be a longer So it's a short I'll read that when I'm jerking off. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> when you're when you're acquainting yourself with your computer, when I'm acquainting myself with my computer. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, PH. <laughs> of course, that's what I thought of right away too. I was acquainting myself with my computer. Yeah, you were rubbing your computer while she was saying it. <laughs> so anyway, big thanks to PMH for coming on the show. Uh, big thanks to Nathan for helping us out. You're welcome. Um, yeah, thanks. Big thanks, Nathan, for giving us some support while I was here. Mm. All of you guys can head over to America.ca slash support. You might have already uh, heard Nathan already on an intro by the time this comes out. Yes, you definitely would have. Yeah, you heard Nathan a couple weeks ago. So we'll talk yeah. about all that shit then. I won't bore you with it twice. Okay. But support well, the show. Check out America.ca slash support. Support the show. Uh, sign up for a monthly if you can. Do a one-time donation. Of course, now we're doing the, we've got seven shows or so in the black budget feed. And uh, some more on the way. We're going to do an extra couple of months for uh, as a thank you for all the people that keep the wheels turning. Yeah. Thanks for subscribing and supporting the show. That's about it. All right, guys. Thanks for listening, and we will see you next week.